work, I yeah. 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 What? Oh, come on. Oh, look at those two stars. So what? <laughs> Photo bomb. <Trip>. Photo bomb. <laughs> okay, Chimera is apparently a combination of goat, lion, and snake, which are oh. which uh -huh. is fine. <laughs> You're <laughs> fine. You, you can change. I'll stick with it. No, no. I love snakes. I was actually gonna say Medusa originally. Oh. Uh, so we're I'm, I'm good with that. You can't interact with people. Why is why is this you watch so glasses. quiet? <laughs> <laughs> reflecting glasses. Samantha looks reflecting at us. glasses. Yeah, so that people don't look into your eyes. Oh. <laughs> Samantha, c could you yeah. ask the bridge to see if they can get somebody to check the AC temperature's gone up there? Roger, sure can. Yeah, for the van. Yeah, the, the, the sea water temperatures, uh, the chilling, the chilling water temperature has gone up. It's uh, been, started to rise there. I've been using 15 as the warning sign. As the warning, yeah. Yeah. It's just gone. Uh, it's gone up three degrees there in the last short while. Yeah, it's coming back oh, down though. The yeah, trend. This the trend is coming back down. Watch is full of the hottest people. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, do you have like a chart over time? <laughs> it looks like it's. Yeah. I know Dwight's in this. Yeah, yeah. Alright, where are you going, Robert? Alright. And that's for the chiller or the AC here? That's uh, just fan temperature. The we don't know no, van temperature is 19.9. The, the wa water temperature has gone up to 13.3. And that's what you want them to check? Yeah. Okay. In the chiller? Yeah. What's that white one there? Which one? I wonder if that does that, that happen during like the day. That looks like Like you, you start me. out kind of cooler. That or hemi no, it, it has a regular. It has a real regular yeah. cycle. This uh, is morning, right? Yeah. <laughs> it goes yeah. from about uh, eleven. Want to zoom on that? Actually, yeah. What are we 12. zooming on? Can we zoom on that, please? Oh, okay. Zoom in, Dave. Yeah, that is. Hemi? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's Hemi Corallium. I don't know. Sometimes Enolopsomia looks really similar. It's a great view of the branching. Yeah. Let me look at the guide. I'm going to swing around the port there, Robert, just for two seconds. Okay. One second. And take that wrap out. Roger. Let's come up a bit. We good? Yep. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we can uh, do another move if uh, folks are ready for that. Yeah. We're all good back here. Give me uh, just two seconds there, I'll get this wrap out. Two seconds, Roger. Ready now? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and no. Great. There we go. All good. Bridge nav. Let's do a uh, two zero meters one zero zero, please. Yes. Uh, yes, please, bridge. There's a sponge. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Do we want to zoom on the sponge? Sure. Okay. And I think that coral was an elapsomia, which is a 
stony coral. Ooh. Well, this one looks like a pizza dough. <laughs> Bicycle seat. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think it's some sort of euplectylid. Mm. Paula, what do you think about this one? Maybe Hi. Polosoma. Yeah, I'm having mixed feelings about this one. Yeah, it's an interesting shape. <laughs> okay, I think we're good on that. Thank you. So what are we looking for in this dive? Any goals, any sampling goals? Um, yeah, so we, you know, same as always, we wanna sample things that are characteristic of the area and also anything new and interesting that we find. Um, we wanna represent the biology and geology of the area. So we'll take some push cores, some rock samples, um, probably sample some coral and sponges and um, eDNA samples. Awesome, thank you. The kind of cool thing about this particular dive is we're going up a little hill, down the hill, and back up another hill of similar um, size and steepness. So it'll give right. us a really nice <laughs> test on, um, on the different sides of these little hills of whether there's a difference in the coral communities between the east and the west. Adam sounds different now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Brian. Hello. It's transformed. Hello. And uh, speaking of up and down the knolls, we are just at the top of uh, this knoll. Great. Adam mentioned that we hadn't sampled a rock in a while. Was there interest in collecting a rock at the top of this yep. knoll? Yep, I think, I think that okay. would be ideal. Great. We are about five meters off of finishing a move. We'll be well positioned for that. Now we just have to find something that would like to come with us. So I feel like some of these things we've been seeing are um, analopsomia and some are hemichorallium. Is that, has yep. that been the case? Okay. Yep. So that's an analopsomia there yeah. on the left. Yep, you're absolutely right. Okay, cool. Can you tell us about what you do? The right? Oh, hi everyone. I'm Brian. I was just got off watch, had <laughs> breakfast, and now I'm back because Adam has to make a couple phone calls before um, end of business East Coast time. Um, so I am the biological sciences lead for the expedition, and I'm a deep sea benthic ecologist kind of specializing in coral and sponge communities on seamounts. Awesome, Brian. No, what's up? <laughs> um, are there any um, uh, current research that you are? are researching currently about our Bethic communities? Sure, so one of my big research questions is kind of understanding that where these um, corals live. And so um, the, the little outline I just um, described about the way this particular dive is running um, is very similar to a project that I'm in the process of finishing up from two years ago when I was out on the oh. research vessel Falcor. And we looked at a um, a conical shaped seamount, so kind of a pointy topped um, seamount in a little bit shallower water over in the Phoenix Islands, which is about a thousand miles west of here. Um, and we ran up, uh, we did 
three kilometer or two kilometer transects up each side of the seamount at different cardinal directions to compare how uh, the patterns of life, the zonation, the turnover between species um, varied between the different sides of the seamount. Um, trying to better understand, you know, how much how much variability there is in the coral life on a particular seamount. And in that particular case, the, oh, the it looks like abundance a varied quite a bit between the different sides of the feature, but the community composition was pretty similar across all the features, and the transitions from the deep community to a mid, you know, the shallower communities was pretty consistent, plus or minus 50 to 100 meters on each side of the feature. So it was kind of a mixed answer of there was a lot of variability, but it was more in terms of how productive each side was, but it made up mostly the similar, um, uh, mostly similar genuses. But one of the ones we did see a pretty difference, big differences is the Analopsamia that um, we're seeing for the first time on this expedition here um, was much in, found in much higher abundance on the north and south faces of it, which are the higher current faces uh, on that particular seamount. Um, we saw them on the, all four sides, but they seem to really um, prefer the currenty sides. What do we think of these? Um, they look pretty promising. Okay, so I would say maybe not. TJ, can you give me some leash? I'm getting yep. yanked a lot. Okay, so what has been the most interesting part of your research, or, yeah? Um, that's hard to say. I, I really enjoy the field work doing this mm -hmm. um, okay. in a lot of ways, but I am always kind of curious about where you're, these you're patterns. You're way, way out there for me. I'm just way off from you. It's what? You're just stretched out. Yeah, so give me some more leash. I'm just, I'm, I but I'm, sit. I'm sitting on the, uh, I'm coming down uh, on, the, on the tether. You get me? I'm gonna come. Oh. I'm sitting on it like. Yeah, that's okay. We can do that. We just can't have it go over the top. All right, that's what it's gonna do. The tail. What what's gonna do? It's just swinging over the top. Watch it. Every time I surge, it swings around. It comes over. What do you mean comes over? That is, when I go when I go down when I surge down, it swings over it's to the side. It's staying underneath. Yeah, but we'll watch when I surge. When I surge. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That looks surge. okay to me. Q <laughs> <Cue> surge. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a standard operating mode there. It's when you get too much slack and it gets, gets up over the top. That's a bad scene. Oh, we do have a question from chat. Uh, do currents encourage growth in communities due to the fact that they bring more detritus? We loose think so, or yes. loose? What do you say? I'm going to go loose. 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 Ta -da. Awesome. That looks quite nice. Is that a good one? Yeah, I think so. Adam says he was partial to candy corn looking rocks. Candy corn looking <laughs> rocks. <laughs> this one's more Sorry, Chad, flat. stand by. I don't know if this is a, meets the goal of 
<laughs> yeah, I think that's probably good enough. That's, it should have a core of real rock in there inside the crust. This would be yep. sample 099. 099. Ooh. Ooh, we're almost there. Almost 149. Swap over to sample. Yep, starboard. We only have the yep. F bio box available. F bio box. Okay. All right, swapping over. All right, sample tray coming out. Let's go. <laughs> I saw a lot of really odd things last night. That's true. Such as? Um, <laughs> like crime scene. Where do I even start? Crime scene. <laughs> um, well, there was this umbalula that looked like it was like bent over, and like where it was bent, there was some associate we couldn't even tell what it was it could have been like a anemone but anyway there was that and then there was a slime star on like a stalk but it was just like fully like covering it and like it looked like it was a part of another stalk and then next to that there was like the head of a crinoid so Seems like there was and the a crinoid was there. growing new series. Yeah, yeah it was that's true. Growing, yeah. But in a really odd, stumpy way. Yeah. Like one stump down and then Siri off of that. Huh. That is weird. Yeah. We saw a sea spider. Oh, yeah. That, that, was, that was on my list of things that would have been strange that we hadn't seen a single one yet. Yeah. Yeah, that one was cool. What else did we see? So is it mm. possible that the Continue. star do we had, had decapitated the... Uh, do you want to... We're going down slope now. Are you happy with this orientation of vehicles? Well, how steep is the downhill? Uh, great question. This it's going to be moderately still steep. Moderately steep. Still, okay. still uh, uphill here. We'll cross that bridge. Copy. Science, anything else we want to do here before nope. we move it on? Onward or downwards. <laughs> Bridge nav. Three zero meters, one zero zero. So is it possible that the slime star had decapitated the crinoid? Yeah, it's possible. Got some pictures. Yeah, I feel like a lot of like weird associates. There was one um, penatula. We saw a bunch of them. We looked at like, zoomed in on three. There was one of them that had these like weird spots, like it was covered in spots. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have really seemed to have moved out of the hemicrallium band here. So most yeah, of my like last it. watch, we were in heavy, big, huge hemicralliums with a lot of enlopsamias. Mm -hmm. And now we seem as we've come, gotten up to the, the top of this knoll. We've almost dropped completely those, picked up a whole bunch of paramercias, and we're now back into some of the uh, stocked crinoids that we were seeing previous dives in this depth range up on the top of these features. Yeah. With a couple, one couple of these big primnoids still hanging around. Would you call these all paramaricia? The little, the little ones are. The uh, they've ones. been renamed. Okay. I would have called them Plexor two weeks ago. Okay. What changed? So, um, <coughs> genetic evidence basically indicated that the the familiar relationships we were previously operating under were based on the shape and the build of the coral. The morphology um, was probably wrong, and so uh, a group of researchers have done a lot of work and have rebuilt um, this branch of the tree of life and have dropped a lot of the thing, a lot of the genuses, genera that were under Plexorid have been bounced over into a new family, Paramerciidae. Um, and so we're having to relearn the, the, the proper vocabulary to describe these organisms under the latest and greatest research. 
And this just happened a few weeks ago, you said? Uh, no. I only became aware of it a few weeks ago. I think, oh, the, pa okay. I think the paper was published sometime last year. Okay. We've seen a nice diversity of black corals on this dive as well. This uh, black yeah. coral coming down the left is abathopathies, and we've seen umbilopathies, trisopathies, heteropathies, and paranopathies probably all this morning. I think the only kind of major coral group we didn't see this morning is Madripoora, and the we're, we may have seen one. I struggle sometimes. Some of the growth forms of Madripoora look similar enough to the Analapsamias that I struggle telling them apart. Mm. So we may have seen one or two Madripoora this morning as well. But other than that, we've seen just about every major coral taxa that are found in this part of the world on this dive. That's really amazing. We've seen some really cool things. A lot of whale bones. Yeah, I'm really yeah, looking forward yeah. to seeing the second one and seeing how it compares yeah. to the one we collected yesterday. So exciting. The day before yesterday. While we're waiting for some leash, can we sit down and look at the associates on one of these uh, yellow corals? Yep. Paula, how many rocks do we have total for this dive? We have... Leave me one sec. We have three rocks and one whale bone. Cool, thank you. All right, so we've got, looks Correction, like. Correction, sorry, four rocks. Four rocks, okay. So yeah, Amber, we've got four reason. rocks, one, two or three at the base of um, this feature and then the one at the top. So this is um, what we're now calling uh, a Paramercia day. Um, and with four Astroschema sea stars on it, and these brittle stars, we believe, have a commensal relationship or maybe even a mutualistic relationship with um, the corals they live on. <coughs> we don't exactly understand the relationship here, whether the coral um, really benefits from having them or not. There's some evidence from the Gulf of Mexico after the Deepwater Horizon oil spill that corals that had these um, symbiotic brittle stars actually fared better, and they think the brittle star may have been cleaning the oil and the dispersant off of wow. them. Um, but other times you do see areas with, are they are have fewer polyps or no polyps where the brittle stars hang on, so the brittle stars also may be doing some level of damage. Um, but, when we're, but we're sure the brittle star benefits from the relationship. All right, thanks a lot, Robert. I think we're good. What are these little uh, mini red isopods or something? They got a red head. Um, oh. Probably. We definitely saw some on earlier when we zoomed in on some earlier ones. If you go up a little bit, I think there's another two. Moving around. Yeah, one of the, we stopped and looked at one of the primnoids um, on the last watch and it has covered in amphipods, so that's probably what that is. It's a little hard to tell from that view, but yeah, most likely. All right, I think if you've got some leash, let's continue on. Okay, I'm gonna put in a move to start down the slope. Bridge oh, yeah. now. I've been seeing a lot of Bolasoma. A lot or a couple? Three zero meters, zero Same nine zero. Yeah. At least, la at least last night. I don't know about this morning. But zero nine zero. Not many this morning. That's why I was. Oh, okay, gotcha. I saw a couple, but it was pretty sponge light this morning. Got some stick of pappies. Yeah. Did 
did you see the oxygen concentration graph over the course of the morning? It's I not, didn't. It's not a big magnitude change, but it was a pretty noticeable yeah. water mass change because the temperature mirrored it too. Oh, wow. So at first I thought it was a, an error in the correction on the O2 sensor, but if you looked yeah. at the corrected one, it still exists. And so there was some kind of little water mass change right in there that, huh. that did kind of correspond with the uh, <coughs> higher um, density of corals. We oh, had a little bit more oxygen and a little less temperature. Didn't map up, map up perfectly, but yeah, it kind of the two kind of peaked at the same time. Interestingly, I'd be curious to see correlation later. Yeah, that's a small. That's a pretty. I mean, that's only two micromil micromole per liter difference. So it's not a mm -hmm. big difference at all, but. I mean, this could be like a really uh, simple. I think it's a good question to for our viewers as well. Like, why why is it important to study like these benthic communities? Um, well, I mean, if you consider that we know more, or we've we've explored more of the moon than we have of the deep sea. Right. We've only just scratched the surface. Um, so. There's there's a lot a lot yet to discover. Um, we're always finding new species. Um, we're always updating taxonomy um, as genetic technology gets better too. Um, and these communities are vulnerable to anthropogenic threats like climate change and deep sea mining. Um, this area is actually. Um, has been nominated as a national marine sanctuary. Uh, so all of the data that we collect helps to inform um, helps to inform conservation efforts, such as this one. Yeah, and the, the ocean is, is super important on, a, on just about every scale you look at it in terms of helping okay. regulate climate, sequester carbon, provide uh, provision resources for fishing stocks and stuff and while you know the fishing effort and stuff like that's in shallow water a lot of the nutrients and uh, biogeochemical processes that put the nutrients in a way that's usable by phytoplankton it happens down here in the deep sea and so any fishery that is dependent on upwelling which is a lot of the most productive ones uh, are dependent on these e deep sea ecosystems in order to help prepare that water and make it uh, as nutrient rich as it is before it gets upwelled into the surface waters. So understanding that those global cycling um, patterns, the deep sea plays a critical role. It's one of the largest, depending on how you define the deep sea, it's either the largest or one of the largest um, regions on the planet in the biosphere. And so understanding what lives here and how the biodiversity that's found here supports those kind of global ecological processes is critical for understanding how the planet works. Uh, especially in an age of uh, rapid global climate change. Right. Oh, and then we have a question from chat. Are there any traces of human impact on these deep sea ecosystems? Or since they're so unfamiliar, is it hard to know what has changed as a result? So um. kind of two answers on that one is one is, yes, there is change. Um, we can tell that we do find litter and trash and all that down. Um, here frequently um, we have wow. not seen any on this trip that i'm aware of have we have you seen any we haven't seen um but um we've definitely seen a lot um and over the course of you know out here even these extremely remote locations i'll be shocked if we don't come across at least one or two pieces of trash out here at some point um and then but measuring that change is hard because we have so little data um we that it's a, a much, much more difficult to try to actually assess that level of change. Another watch did uh, see a PBR can the other day. Okay, so we have... One one piece identified. <laughs> yeah, so we, we went through 187 dives across three years in the Pacific a few years ago and did an analysis of the, the trash across all the dives. And we definitely didn't find any part of the U.S. Pacific 
that didn't have some examples of litter, but these well. areas here in the Phoenix Islands had the least of them, because basically they're the furthest away from population centers. Mm. What was the most common type of garbage that you found in the deep sea? I have to go look it up. Science, anything we want to stop and look at here or keep moving? I think we can keep moving. Roger. Yeah, I remember reading that paper. Bridge, no? I saw that there was a lot of like, um, oh, Dave. like fishing Three zero meters, line, zero nine zero. Fishing Dave. equipment, For sure. oh, wow. plastic, That's metal. That's fluctuating back and forth again. Sad. Yep. Like oh, nets. Okay. Are you from bottom yeah. trawling nets or just? Um, fishing. Oh. fishing yeah. Yeah, in some cases it did, it was like wrapped around. Get stars. And some hydroids on part yeah. of that coral. Yeah. There's another coral behind it, uh, Umbellopathies. This is not a Paragorgia, right? This is a Hemicorallium. Awesome. Is it because of its texture? It's more rigid? Yeah, um, that's part of why. Look at that um, Anolopsomia in the background. It's sort of a yellowish color. I do love basket stars. It's up to the right. Up to the right? Mm hmm. Not the one on the left. No. It's next to a large uh, beige coral. Right here. Zoom in, Dave. It's a tough angle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Bridge, Nav. How much smaller those polyps are? Can we add two zero meters to the zero nine zero step? I haven't really seen a yellow Anolopsomia before. getting some pictures on the still cam right now. We good? Yep. Yeah, good here. Thank you. And so we have a question from um, 
from chat. Is the salinity of the water at these depths equivalent to that of other areas? And is this some factor that favors or not the marine diversity of corals or sponges, for example? So salinity in the deep sea is pretty uniform. You'll see a lot more variation in shallower waters because there's a lot more mixing. Um, so I am not sure if salinity influences um, distribution at this depth, mm -hmm. um, but certainly at shallower depths, it does influence the biology in different areas. Right, thank you. And then our friends from Friday Harbor, the students, were wondering if there have been any surprise species seen so far in the cruise. That's a good question. Yeah, for you guys, any surprise species? Shout out to Tim's class. Hey. <laughs> Um, we've definitely seen a lot of really interesting things. Um, I mean, I'm always blown away. <laughs> um, so sometimes we don't know, like, if if something we've found is actually, like, a, a new species, if it's different from other variations of the same genus. Right. Until we do DNA analysis, but... I guess for me what's maybe been surprising is the difference in the ecosystem structure in the various seamounts. So mm -hmm. sometimes dominated by one coral, sometimes dominated by another, sometimes a, a huge mixture. And uh, it's not, if you go to the same depth in, in the, any of these places, I think it'd be tough to predict what the dominant species would be. Yeah, that's very true. And then when we um, collect these species, we don't... Um, so this question, are samples studied on, on board as you collect, or are they stored for after the expedition? Okay. They, we place. process samples on board, and then they're analyzed um, once they, they go out to researchers and MCZ or URI. Um, that's, yeah. I think they do kind of a rudimentary description on board. Right. But uh, then, then experts on shore can do a more detailed analysis. Right, thank can you. Can you lighten up that still cam a little bit? Yeah, I've been adjusting based on um, how it looks closer up. Oh, I see. That's a Victor Gorgia over there. Oh. Cool. Do another move. Uh, we are in another move. Right. Got 15 meters left. This is very impressive. Yeah. Is that a type of black coral? They're really large ones? Uh, yeah. These ones, these yeah. are uh, primnoids. primnoids. Wow. Huge. In bubble cam, you can get an idea of shape of this formation. This cam? Yeah. Is that bubble? Cams over there. Oh, what's that? That's calling a pilot cam. It's one of the stereo cams. Okay, pilot S cam. Side <laughs> <laughs> bubble sounds cooler. Yeah. So, Adam, what's going on here? What's this feature? Uh. Did you just answer that? No. No. Okay. No, you mean the geologic uh, feature? Yeah. Geologic so yes. The. We're, we're pretty near the top of this seamount, kind of along the ridge, or this bump, I guess. And so I expect this to be like kind of the more resistant, resistant to erosion kind of material. Ooh, look at that one. That's wow. cool. Wow. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. Lots of brittle stars. So this may be kind of the source region for all the kind of talus we see. Uh, down the slope. What does talus mean? Talus is basically a pile of fragmented rocks that that uh, accumulate on a slope, and they generally f describe larger pieces. You know, so there is official terms for size of 
pieces of rocks. You know, there's uh, sand, gravel, cobbles, boulders. So I think where Talus usually describes kind of cobble to boulder type of sizes. It can be really fun on land if, if you find a big talus pile and the sizes are small enough to kind of like glissade down through the, the rocks. So what's the difference between talus and scree? Ooh, scree. <laughs> scree. <laughs> that seems like a made up for you. No, no, scree's for real. That's the sound when you see a really <laughs> good rock for and you stop quick. <laughs> scree. You never hear that in the ocean, though. Nobody no. ever says that. No. And you also, the the way it's used, you hear tailless pile and scree slope. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So it's a slope of fragmented rocks? I, I generally think of it as slightly kind of smaller size fragments than tailless. Hmm, interesting. But Ship move is complete, by the way, so we can check this area out as much as we want. Okay, great. What is this one, Jules? Paramarisa Day. Uh-huh. You passed the test. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that answer? Listen. <laughs> Urchin King knows all. <laughs> <laughs> so Adam, when you were away, did you have FOMOX? Yes. Fear so of missing out on corals and sponges? Yeah. <laughs> this one though, wow. that is an elapsomia. Beautiful. And that one as well, but hemicorallium. Really? The branching looks so similar. I think so. Uh okay, hold on. They do look really similar. This one does seem to have more of a central stalk. Yeah, the I think the stalk and the the branches are are thicker. But the fine structure looks And those are more identical. like Oh, I know. It's so confusing. Also seems Now I'm questioning if they're all corallium. Look at this. It looks like I don't know if those are right next to each other, but they're like, oh, I see you there. I'm not going to grow into you. <laughs> it does kind of look like that. Or are they overlapped? It's hard to tell. We could hang out here for another second while I can pair. <laughs> Branch structures. Yeah. So what are we looking at specifically here? Um, this is actually great because I want to compare um, like this white one to the pink one to the yellow one. <laughs> okay. So the coral triangle. I think they may all be hemicorallium. Very interesting that oxygen does not correlate very well with the depth around here which probably means that there's a fair bit of like upwelling, which yeah, makes sure. sense with the high density and diversity. I'm just gonna take a still cam before we move on. Are we good? Yeah, we can continue. Right. I'm going to call those hemicorallium. Or corallium, possibly. Okay. And then move on. Thank you. Oh, there's an anemone. Wow, just keeps going. I 
find I have kind of a finite amount of room in my brain for different corals. <laughs> <laughs> this this place is kind of stressing me out because, like... Uh, yeah, like, this is Analopsomia. So it, nope. this one right here, oh, it looks no really room for similar an, an to Hemicorallian. And look at those names, though. What? The Analopsomia Urchin. is Where's it? a little oh. chunkier. It is chunkier. You have my protection. <laughs> <laughs> Another loyal subject. Oh, it's so nice. Oh, it's quite wow. close. Okay, keep moving. Yeah. These are all hemicorallium used? Bridge, no? Yeah. That's impressive. Look at that black coral. That's cool. There's a couple of black corals. Three zero meters, zero nine zero. These ones. What is this one, do you think? That's what I'm wondering. I'm gonna look into that right Looks now. Looks kind of like bottle brushy. Or, or else it's yeah, the, uh, it does. we're looking at the top and it's a, oh man, I've lost it. I've lost all my corals. <laughs> Nothing. Don't worry about it. Oh, you are. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> There's a rock pen. Were we still looking for rock pens or no? Uh, let's look at the rock pen. This one? Yeah. Uh, below that. This one. Yep, that one. Nice. Right there, under your lasers. Aha. Uh -huh. See, I find if you say aha uh -huh loudly, <laughs> it gives you a few minutes to really <laughs> think about what it might be. <laughs> That's a good technique. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, good. You got it. I know we have like. Oh. That's ah. uh, that's great. That's <laughs> wow. It's uh, Anthoptilum. <laughs> Anthoptilum. Anthoptilum. <laughs> 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 um, I think on. <laughs> one of the black corals we passed is Trisopathies. Uh, I don't know about the yeah. other one. Wow. It's a nice array there on the right. Yeah, wow. It's so beautiful. So I'm seeing similar density and diversity on both sides of this. Oh, look at that sponge. Knob. That looks like a ferret. No, it like it kind of looks like one that we saw earlier. The turbocharger? <laughs> <laughs> the one that wasn't the turbocharger. Ah. The one that the people in the chat found for me. Is this a white paragorgia? I think that one Hemi. might be... <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. Can we zoom? Brian, help us. <laughs> on the paragorgia? Or, or on the potential paragorgia? <laughs> or on the sponge? On this. I think that's analopsomia. Okay. For real this time. <laughs> It is, yeah. All right, no take back. <laughs> no take back. In the deep sea. <laughs> yeah, they're always saying that in the deep sea. And what about this one? That's a cool, little guy. A teeny tiny paramercidae. Um. And is that an umbellopathies? Did I just make that word up? Now I'm not even sure. <laughs> Oh, another one that I think we saw earlier was a dendropathies. Ooh. I think I'm trying to figure out what that one's. I I can't tell from the top if it's umbellopathies or something else. Sorry, can we look at the black coral below the sponge to the leftish right there? I don't think that's umbellopathies. It might be another trisopathies or parentopathies. We got lots of options. <laughs> I 
chat will be off bottom at about 1245 and recover the vehicles about two o'clock. And then, oh, and then this is not Tim's class is wondering <laughs> how long the dive will run or is it until all sample boxes are full? Is it Sam's class? Yeah, it is. Yeah, and then there was Hi, an earlier Sam. comment. Whoa, Tim wishes he was watching. Sam's class is hurt. Oh, <laughs> <Aww. laughs> sorry. Hi, Sam. Sam was uh, the uh, education program's uh, manager for OET oh. for a long time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Before my time. Right, well, right as I was coming in. He was, uh, I think Moving there's another teaching. Bella Pappies in there. <laughs> I think there's also something else in there. Maybe telepathies. Maybe it's two umbrella pathies. <laughs> Samantha, can I get a uh, distance versus time update for our watch so far? This is good. <laughs> Thank you. You mean our distance or yes. remaining distance? No, no, our distance. We're, we're, we yeah, gotta... let me see here. I feel like we might be doing better. All right, so far. Hopefully, uh, yeah. That's okay. Optimistic. Optimistic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think we've gone about 260 meters. Boom. In one hour. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Let's, moving, let's go. Folks. We're turning a new leaf. Yeah, because we were almost at the top when we did the handover. And Samantha, how does that compare to the pace of other watches? Just curious. <laughs> I think well, we're going really fast. Dwight had said that most watches are doing 250 meters an hour. Right. So that's um, we're how many less than 250? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. 250? It's been over an hour. It's been over an hour, so we're actually <laughs> we're a little below. Uh -oh. We're doing fine. <laughs> there's no, there's no yellow jerseys for this watch. Yeah, let's let's uh, average it out over the four hours and see <laughs> how we're doing. All right, put in an 800 meter move. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the end. Just keep going. <laughs> no stops. No matter what I say. At two knots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At two knots. Woo. Ludicrous speed. Okay. Let's shove some turbocharger sponges, sponges in there. <laughs> yeah. the engine. Yeah, collect some of those, see what happens. Okay, so we are finishing a move. Anything we want to stop and look at? Oh, keep going. what's all that? No, another move. Another move. <laughs> Bridge, no? Determined <laughs> <laughs> to move. <laughs> Three zero meter zero nine zero. Would you consider shrimp the cockroach of the ocean? Oh, what? Interesting. Oh, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> it's yeah. everywhere. Interesting. Looks like a um, metallic gorge of Bella. Are not happy with that. Yeah, <laughs> the cockroach of the ocean. I have a friend. And then it's kind of like pigeons, the rats of the sky. <laughs> Yeah. Amphipods oh. are called sea lice, but I think that's oh. more due to their uh, Cuskill. Cuskill. Their the fact that they are related. <laughs> like actually related. Oh, that's not likely. But <laughs> shrimp are also related. So just a quick quick question. What do cusks cusk eels feed on? What's their predominant food source here at Depth? Hmm. Is it, is the, it the cusks, cusks of other animals? <laughs> I think yeah, they're cusks and maybe eels. And I think they're scavengers. Yeah, oh, I don't right. think they're hunters. Right? Yeah. Apparently, they can eat oh. crabs and mollusks. Yeah. Crabs and mollusks. Whoa! That thing eats crabs. So squat, yeah. Impressive. So the squat lobsters we're seeing and. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, they prey on inverts, crustaceans, and other small bottom-dwelling fishes. Hmm. I mean, considering that we've seen them wow. swim into a rock, okay. essentially, <laughs> every time I've seen them. I don't think they'd be very good hunters. <laughs> they feed on whatever accidentally swims into their mouth. Like, maybe they hit a rock and an anemone falls off into their mouth. <laughs> It would make sense that they eat mollusks. It's slower than them. Mm -hmm. That's right. true. A bit slower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you at 
cuskfacts.com. Yeah. <laughs> it's mass.gov. Mass learn about cusk. That, uh, That's what it's called. That domain is still available if anyone <laughs> wants to purchase it. If someone's going to buy it in your name. <laughs> more rock pens. And more black corals. And hemichorallium. And paramaricidae. Wow. Bathy bathies. Primnoid. You know what I haven't seen a whole lot of? Bamboo corals. Yeah. Oh. But, you know, let's let's zoom on this. That's beautiful. That is really gorgeous. Reminds me of like a harp or something, you know? Yeah. Right. It reminds me of the harp sponge, which is a carnivorous sponge that looks kind of similar, but without the, the waviness. I'd like to see that. I do not think that. Can we that's get a zoop? <laughs> a super. <laughs> all right. Microscope. Can we get a super zoom? <laughs> Can we go microscope <laughs> mode? You've got more. <laughs> um, yeah, Primnoid. All right, I think we're good here. We're good. Thank you. What's the black coral in the background there? Was that bathy pathies? Um, yeah, there was a bathy pathies, and there was another one, another schizopathidae. Um, oh, my gosh, all the black corals blend together. I think it was possibly parentopathies or telopathies. A lot of telopathies around here, I think. All right, team, keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. So you said there's bridge like nav. Oh. Yeah, what's up? Three what? zero meter zero nine zero. <laughs> okay, so you said that uh, we're not seeing on um, bamboos, right? Is there a reason for that? I'm not sure exactly. Uh, yeah, that's something that we <laughs> may be able to find out um, later, maybe months or even uh, <laughs> years from now after right, people right. really look through this data. Um, I can't say anything definitive right now, but... Is that a bamboo? That could be a bamboo, you know, and yeah. it's, there could that's be some mixed in here. Right. It's definitely not a dominant... Um, family though thank you yeah those are bamboo yep so just as soon as i said that we were bamboozled <laughs> you sure were sure were I want to know from Sam's class, how many more days of school do you guys have? Right. And then Friday Harbor, yes, we do do coral sampling. We have. Interesting. We're seeing bamboo as we start to lose some of the <laughs> density and diversity. Yeah, right. that's true. I wonder true. if it's a kind of a, a transitional species. 
and we're back. Yeah, we kind of seem to have a lot of the Chrysogorgia bamboo dominated thing again. It's a ferried sponge, maybe? Uh, no, I don't think there's very sponges. I, this one? Oh, that one, yeah, it is a ferried, sorry. <laughs> yeah, and another one. Um, can we zoom on this, please? And another foray. <laughs> yeah, another one there. Yeah. It could be. This could be Chrysogorgia. No, these are black Can corals. Umbellop. No. <laughs> That's so hard to see. Yeah, that looks like. That's either umbellopathies or telopathies. And then there's also a uh, stichopathies. I don't even think that's <laughs> any of the things I said. Umbrella about these. This is hard. Chat, the green lasers are for measurement. They're 10 centimeters apart. And then Sam's class says June 16th. It's pretty soon. Oh. Not that they're counting or anything. Uh, I, I definitely know that they're counting. My kids are for sure counting. That's when I get to go home, too. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's All of us, too. Oh. Last day of class. I wonder if we're going to have an end of class or end of season party. Right? Uh, <laughs> Maybe we'll have a pizza day. Maybe we should make yearbooks. Ooh, have a yeah. great summer. See you next year. We have Bye. an art gallery that we can turn into a yearbook. <laughs> uh, what I did, did you get just gave? For which one? The black, pa uh, black coral? That just last name, too. You mentioned just now, like, a oh. coral ID. <laughs> oh. Whoa, what's Thank that you. one? That looks weird. Which one? Um, really leggy. A lot of them. <laughs> Stocked something? <laughs> yeah. Like crinoid, I think. Yeah. Are those? Yeah, I think we're just looking right, we're up near the top of Are it. those chrysogorgids next oh. to them? Wow. Wow. Very leggy. I feel like some of these black corals look like chrysogorgids. They are black corals, though. Uh, telopathies. Umbellopathies. Someone in the chat wants to help me out. <laughs> Steve? Where's Steve? That's a Umbellopathies, I think. I think that one is, yeah. Oh, and look at that little sponge. Little tube. All right, we're good on this one. Thank you. I pretty sure that those are some chrysogorgias. No, actually you're right. No, I'm they're all black corals. just looking down at the top of it. Yeah. Um, oh, there's a, what do you call that one? Um, yeah. eh, Parantopathies. Parantopathies, yeah. <laughs> some sort of pathies. <laughs> Too many pathies. We're giving you a pathos from the pathies. This is a black coral quiz, actually. <laughs> black coral midterm. Oh my god. Okay, team, keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Bridge, Nav? Yeah, I think uh, I think they might be on Bellopathies. Three oh, zero yeah. meters, zero nine zero. Our friends from the Netherlands wishes you a happy birthday, Paula. Oh, thank you so much. I think this is the first time somebody from the Netherlands. Oh, yeah. Hey. Happy birthday. Mm -hmm. this one. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that coral fell over. Oh. There's a fly trap anemone. Oh, well, hello from our f to our friends from Florida. What is the origination of the Palmyra name of the atoll? Which we only ask because Palmyra was a great layer in the Bahamas for a James Bond villain. 
Scooby and me, GE. Oh. I'm reading here, the atoll received its name from the American vessel Palmyra under the command of Captain, well, Saul. <laughs> <laughs> who sought shelter there in November on November 7th, 1802. U.S. Department of Interior. Oh, Neat. wow. It's cool. Still quite a lot of diversity here. Yeah, I feel like we've switched over a little bit. Um more lost a lot of black the coral dominated. Yeah, yeah, lost a lot of the hemi. Still seeing a lot of primnodes. Bolsaro sponge. Bolosoma? Bolsoma. Right oh yeah, Bolosoma. Whoa. Big black coral. Telepathies. I think. Mm, no, I'm changing my mind. <sighs> I'm settling on lilipathies. For that one. You know what I think? <laughs> We're at about 14, 47 meters. Uh, this is, if you have any questions, send them in the chat box. Thanks for tuning in. So Adam, is there a reason why these rocks show like a formation where something flowed there at some point? Uh, yes, perhaps. So all of these <coughs> rocks, or at least underlying these rocks, are, are basically lava flows. So we could see some of the structures that look like the original lava flows. Whoa. Um, but it's a, it's a little bit tough to say because we're on the slope of a little knoll that may also have, at least the surface have, may have been created by transport of material down slope like landslidey stuff. And if that got coated with um, manganese, it could have a similar Can appearance. Can we zoom on this place? That would be so swift, interesting. Yeah. an astro schema. Thank you. Oxygen concentration has really been shooting up as we've been coming down. Really? Interesting. Oh, wow. Brian said he noticed earlier that there was a sudden increase in oxygen and decrease in temperature, and they saw a lot of corals around that area. Yep, well, this is very similar to what we're seeing now, but we're also descending quite a lot. Bridge mm -hmm. now. We can add uh, three zero meters, zero nine zero to this current step. I think I'd like to take the data from all the dives and kind of look at the correlation of depth, temperature, and oxygen, see where there are anomalies. Yeah, same here. That would be very interesting. That's all really interesting to me. You think that'd be interesting, Paula? Yeah. Okay, I'm assigning that 
to you. <laughs> <laughs> I would happily do it. I can help you do it, and then I, I learn how to do it. <laughs> who's who's, I'll a, do mat, it with you, who's a MATLAB person? I like our studio. Oh, we're, like we're, we're incompatible. <laughs> <laughs> You're a MATLAB person? You oh, my God, physics? I love MATLAB. Really? Oh, love you it. You do? Oh, I do. Will you show me how to use MATLAB? Yeah. I've only used R. Sure. Okay. You can give us a crash course. Okay. Yeah, maybe we could look at maybe the when we're like most awake. I don't want to put you. <laughs> <guys. Yeah. laughs> no, you may have noticed I'm a little more quiet today. There's a reason for that. Um, we could look at the data that I collected or not collected, the um, annotations from the Falcor dives. So I've never, good. yeah, I've never actually done anything with it, and I kind of want to see where was this expedition from. Uh, to the Phoenix Islands from a 2021 um, yeah. expedition. Oh. That's That was Brian's project that I was helping with. No one said Phoenix is their mythical creature. That is such a good one. True. It's true. That is a really good one. Yules, that would be very interesting to look at. After R Adam's crash course, we can do anything. <laughs> oh <my laughs> gosh. Adam, are there some advantages um, using MATLAB over R? Uh, I don't really know. I've never really used R. Uh, MATLAB has a bunch of toolboxes that are really oh. useful. So some kind of lots of built-in commands for image processing and machine learning and things like that. But I think it's more of like, what are you familiar with and facile with to do what you need to do? Oh, okay. It sounds more, a bit more efficient than R, where you have to, unless you have somebody already wrote the code, you have to. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's how most coding works is you start you often start with something else that you did before or someone else did and then yeah. that's usually how it goes is r better than matlab for statistics or are they like really similar in that way i mean i think it depends who you ask probably okay. We do have a question. So what is the reason why corals and marine sponges at depths where sunlight does not reach have different colors, with white being the predominant color? Um, it has to do with the light that penetrates at these depths. Red light does not reach the the bottom, right? the, the seafloor. Um, and so a lot of corals are shades of um, red and white and brown. Um, which makes them like virtually invisible um, unless <laughs> we're shining a, a light directly at them with Herc. <laughs> but we, <laughs> Thank uh, you. I've heard the explanation that they've retained their ability to make color as they migrated, not migrated, but like evolved from shallower species that did have a lot of need for color down to the deep ocean and so they still have the capacity to make color but it's kind of a vestigial capability doesn't doesn't provide any additional you know protection or harm it just you know is what it is science keep moving yep bridge nav like our appendix like our appendix yes mm -hmm. three zero <laughs> meter zero nine zero what was the original function of our appendix? Does anyone know? I don't know. I've heard that um, some islands in the Pacific actually, they do free diving and at some point they discovered that the appendix holds a lot of blood vessels with high oxygen concentrations. Oh. So when you're at that depth, they are able to release that oxygen into the bloodstream. Huh. Wow. Really neat. But that's a research that's just starting out. 
Yeah, That's cool. Know. So maybe they're still using it. But I don't know its original use. So chat wants to know um, why the ROV is moving backwards. Oh, that's a good question. Are we in an unusual Why are we going backwards? Position? Yeah. Going down the slope? Let's go. That chat, we are going down slope. <laughs> <laughs> so the, to give a little more information, yeah. the pilots prefer to, uh, <laughs> when they're going up slope, they prefer to have Hercules in front and Argus behind. To ah. give an Sky if I was face down slope, we wouldn't see anything. Yeah. Right, right. right. <laughs> yeah. And so down slope, they like to flip that you and have see a Hercules bunch of blue water in front and Argus or <laughs> behind. Awesome. Thank you. But we're almost to the bottom of the hill, and then we'll flip around the other way. Correct. Well, and you okay. do a full. 360 flip, right? <laughs> Back flip. <laughs> Just for funsies. There are some cool new AUVs that uh, that can, y using all their thrusters, can kind of position themselves in can any orientation. Can we zoom on the sponge, please? Whoa. I'll run those at the bottom. Robert, did you those? catch that sponge request, top left? Did not catch Just out the of frame. sponge Sorry. request. Sponge request. Science can you circle it again when it's... Yeah. Visible. This one. Hidden sponge. You zoom in, Dave. Is that a wall cheerio with a lot of astro schema? Yes, it is. Okay. I am satisfied. That's all I wanted. <laughs> So say that again, what you said that was, a Walteria with lots of something or others? Yeah, um, those brittles. Actually, those aren't Astro Schema, sorry. Brittle stars, Ophiroids. Yes. <coughs> and it has the little things sticking off, like? Uh-huh, the spicules. S those those shrimp. spicules. Oh, so is shrimp, shrimp too? Oh, chilling there, or? It's chilling. Okay. A lot of kind different of organisms use these sponges for habitat protection. R right. It's like a high-rise apartment. <laughs> right. Great Luxury apartment. <laughs> like containing a lot of stars. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, we got probably got a new word of the day here. Oh, we? speaking of word was, of the day. Speaking of. <laughs> <laughs> what know, is our I'm word of the day? All right, I think we're good <laughs> on the sponge. Nemesis. 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 I don't even know how I would use that. Wow. A formidable foe. <laughs> Just like the hydrozoan and the paragorgia. Their nemesis. Nemesis. Yeah. Looks like we're back in the flats here. Soon. Ooh, what is that? That is an Eridogorgia. Bridge, no? Are there Magnus for less or Bella? I will be able to see better in a second. We can add three zero meters to zero nine zero. <laughs> is that a? I think it is Bella. Coscue? Oh, that's oh, a rat is tail. That? Is that a rat, rat tail? tail? It's a yeah. very skinny one. Really? It looks it looks like it's starving. <laughs> Not having a good time. No, yeah, that's a rat tail. Just a normal rat tail. What? <laughs> They're interesting looking fish. Sure are.
Also a question from chat, are the videos you obtain ever analyzed using colored or other filters, such as those used in the art world? Yeah, the rat with a hat. Oh, might have a not that I know parasite on its <laughs> Oh no, he has a hat. <laughs> Can we like use the suction? Oh, it's a um, <laughs> isopod. Is it? Is it? Do you think it's they're friends? I think it's an isopod right in the rat tail. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that's something around. new. <laughs> that's so cool. Is it a, a, a nemesis? <laughs> Sorry. Did I, I just had. I wish we could see the front of it because it just. You know that that little thing is like hanging on. <laughs> Oh gosh. Okay. I love dudes BPT isopods, but <laughs> that one got me. Okay. <sighs> Flip that around. Really good. Magnus spiralis or Roger. Magnus spiralis. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You want me to hold the ship while you uh, get ahead? Yeah, I think we're all right. Okay, you gonna zoom? Zip. Zoom is different. Okay, chat. No, today's not my birthday. It's Paula's birthday. Eddie, <laughs> <laughs> what was the question about video analysis? Oh. Oh yeah, um, so it's, um, chat is asking, are the videos you obtain ever analyzed using colored and other filters, such as those used in art world to analyze paintings? Hmm, not that Going I know. Ah, okay. But there is, uh, we can do hyperspectral imaging in the ocean, so, um, you can use UV light. And, and this is more of a shallow water thing, but mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of the corals or the algae that live in them will reflect, you know, very specific wavelengths of light. So you can almost use that to kind of map out where different species are. Oh, that's cool. Another Magnus Paralis. Really large one. So this is what it looks like going downslope pointed forward. Yeah. Science hates this. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, sorry. I guess I flipped around too soon. <laughs> Almost there. Maybe another Get a good years. black and white image out the aft cam. <laughs> 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 just, with, just what we were looking for. <laughs> Is there a reason why we have it on black and white? <laughs> the aft cam? Uh, just oh. a, it's that's more of like a operational camera, just to see what what's there, what's happening. So okay. we don't eat probably don't make a big investment in a great camera for something you don't look at all that much. That's a very, makes sense. You gotta move on? Sure do. That's a good view off the starboard cam as well. Uh, science, when we get to this flatter area in about 10, 15 meters, do you want to keep moving or stop there? Uh, I mean, does the front row need a breather? You know, you come all this way. <laughs> no, I think we can keep moving. Okay. Front row seems to say zip. No objections from the front row. We'll continue. <laughs> I second down. the motion. Robert's rules of order. Move to adjourn. <laughs> Three zero meters, zero nine zero. <laughs> Motion passed. Chat, we do you have zoom to zoom on that. Sorry. Oh. Really? Zooming in? Right. 
there. Pointy rocks or is it, pointy rock? Is it, is it, is it, is it? Chat, we do have two ROV pilots. Uh, we have Thomas Scanlon on Atalanta and Robert Waters on Hercules. We zoom in, Dave. Oh, Ooh. nah, really? Could it be? It could For real? It could be, but I don't think we need uh, it. Uh, what? We don't need it? <laughs> we need it what? Well, I mean. I don't. <laughs> it's Paula's <Jesus>. birthday. <laughs> What? You already got one for her birthday. Yeah. But that's What's Central around? Pacific Time birthday. This is Hawaii birthday. <laughs> I mean, you could pick it up and take a look at it. I, I'm not 100% really? confident. Oh, okay. okay Lacking okay. in confidence. <laughs> really? Right. No one has ever said that about <laughs> me. <laughs> Could it be a, a unicorn horn? Hold <laughs> <laughs> <Whole> position. <laughs> Aw, a unicorn horn for Robert. <laughs> for Pegasus. <laughs> <laughs> Pegasus doesn't have a horn. You could be a Pegacorn. Pegacorn. Yeah. Pegacorn. <laughs> you could be mythical. You can do whatever you want. Exactly. Right? True. <laughs> Oh gosh. Is there a mythical creature that can like transport, like uh, teleport? Like telepresence? <laughs> yeah, like just go home <laughs> for a day. <laughs> Let me look it up. Are you oh, trying to say something yeah. about him? I suppose uh, yeah. Mercury could run across the water, yeah? Hmm. Yeah, there's this one, oh. Grigori. That looks pretty uh, bony. Yeah. Really? Uh, yep. Looks oh, like no. Oh, no. Maybe crusty. Oh, yeah, no. crusty. Wow. Throw it away. Throw it away. Okay. <laughs> Gently <laughs> placed. Adios. Yeah. The way it was sitting, though, it really did look like it was that narrow. Yeah. Tricked us. Little exercise there. this button. Oh, I haven't heard it th anything about the button in a few days. I don't even know what the button is, but I know Bob doesn't it's like the it. the index button. Uh -uh. It's not the, really the button. It seems it's some sort of switch debounce issue. Oh yeah, the old switch debounce. Switchity bounce. <laughs> you gotta, we have chat. You we were checking out light. to see if it was a fossilized the whale bone. So you got to switch to bounce. <laughs> on, the, on the side yeah, of the It's chat. not. It's not chat. Really not. It's switch to bouncing is where you they wrote use on the computer chat. software to determine when you want a single b push of the button. You know, you have a window of time when the, you say, well, that was just one push, not 80 pushes. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> That's cool. So this button has an issue because it... <laughs> It randomly cycles. You can yeah. see it go, but it randomly either, it's like rolling the dice. Interesting. <laughs> we use yeah. that phrase now. And then if, if you think it's frozen and it's not, then you get, because you go. Whoosh. What do you do? You put it away. You, know, <laughs> <move> to <laughs> the you know. Switch to bounce. Okay, we're ready to switch to move. Switch to bounce to move. Bounce to move. Bridge nav. Well, that's a pretty tall whip right Three there. Three zero meters. Ooh. Zero nine zero. Yes, it is. Ooh. I think bridge ran into the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so, Robert, how would you solve the uh, switch issue? switch issue? Yeah. There's algorithms the for switch doing you. proper switch debounce. I'm not saying 
Because this is old code that's been in here. Ah, uh, the code's the problem. Well, no. It's codependent. It's codependent, <laughs> yeah. I'm hearing the buttons right now. And the code hasn't changed, so I don't know why it's, it's different. Yeah, that's interesting. Clearly, the button, the action has changed. Right. I don't know. I don't know how to figure that out. Interesting. Learn something new every day. It's a pretty tall Arita Gorgia to the right, too. I think this is like Ooh. many of the same species, but just smaller. Yeah, Paramaricea. Paramaricea did it. Things don't look quite as large here, also. I'd be curious to know what the flow is on the other side. Feeling any current down here, Robert? Sorry. Hang on. Let me switch to the good. You asking about current? Yeah, you feeling any? No, not really. I mean, okay. you could, I can just let go of the controls. We can see. Yeah. Okay. It's not. It's not very no. strong. Mm -mm. What's the red and gray thing there? Hmm. Can we oh. zoom on that? I was kind of wondering the same. Maybe an anemone. Maybe not. Is that the rock itself? Can we zoom in, Dave? Anthemastus. Oh yeah, it looks like a sucked Oh, it's in. two Anthemastus. Maybe even a Chrysogorgia in front of it. Chrysogorgia. Three Anthemastus. There's Three a little baby. Oh yeah. Do you think they're a family? I think there's oh. even two tiny babies there. Oh. Yeah. Family or do they just split themselves? Well, they just the same thing. Like they're um, just working through some issues. I mean, they'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Split themselves in two. Um, so corals will spawn, so they'll release gametes into the water column. And then those will, after they're fertilized, will settle on uh, the sediment or on, well, rocks. Rocks. And, um, yeah, and then they will clone and and create a like whole organism so these individual these are individual colonies um they are not all genetically identical but they are likely all from the same quote-unquote parent interesting uh, okay is one in its closed farm and the other in open or is yep this yeah okay yeah that's why they call them mushroom corals because they look like mushrooms Cool. Thank you. And then chat also wants to know about um, our RVs. Uh, when we recover the vehicles, uh, do they get washed between dive sites? They they definitely, they yeah. definitely get oh, rinsed. Yeah, they are rinsed. Uh, <laughs> washed, Josh. rinsed. Yeah. Yes, Josh, we've been washing. <laughs> <laughs> washing <laughs> maintenance. Yes, washed maintenance. Yep. Shined until they can see their reflection. <laughs> <laughs> Towel dried. <No>. Everything. <laughs> Cleaned with a toothbrush. 
I don't think we're doing the uh, undercoating, <laughs> undercoat yeah. wax. There's no detailing. <laughs> there, w there was talk about, you know, we just spent a lot of money getting the, uh, the porch finished, and we've been putting scratches in it. That's See, kind all of those scratches. Oh. That was that was a very fancy paint job, and now it's got scratches mm. on it. Mm. Tiny scratches. You can't see them. That <laughs> uh, uh, scratches. I don't know what you're talking about. The, re <laughs> the resale value. Is <laughs> Thanks for that zoom on the scratches. <laughs> it's an off-road vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, to there's be a Wilsonia. Walteria. Oh. Walteria. <laughs> what did you call it? Wilsonia. <laughs> Smithsonian. <laughs> Warrenia. Uh, science, keep moving. Yep. Keep moving. Bridge now. Yeah. Zoom in, Dave. Walteria? Is that what you said? Walteria. Three zero meters, zero nine zero. Is that an Umbella Patty's use or another? Yeah, Umbella Patty's. <laughs> Was that a woohoo? <laughs> <laughs> Getting the hang of them. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, Terry are so cool. That's good. Thank you. You know, aside from corals and sponges, I don't think we've seen that many sea stars or anemones recently. All right. That's true. Or holothurians. Or oh, holothurians. Yeah. What do Where you guys think? Why is that? I have not a clue. Mm -hmm. These are some good rocks. Speaking of rocks, that's a question from chat. I just started watching today. What are you looking for in a rock right now? Uh, we're looking for rocks that we can kind of, that we think are going to be the volcanic material that make up the seamounts. Right. So when you get down in a little valley like this where it's collecting rocks that are coming downhill, you have just less information on where they originally came from. I mean, they came from uphill, but um, could be just pieces of crust that are rolling downhill. So tend not to want to collect from a zoom big in, pile Dave? like this. Ah, oh, OK. Looks like a fallen sponge. Yep. Fallen euplectelid. Thank you. So I had the most amazing dream, and I think we've been <laughs> chanting a lot about whale sharks, but there was everybody in the back row. <laughs> there was Annie, Jules, Adam, and we were just sitting here, and we saw not one, but two Big whale, whale sharks. No way. Wow. Really? Yes. And then on the screens. On the oh. screens. Oh my god. And then a vaquita Manifesting just by two. A vaquita. <laughs> well, I am wearing my whale shark earrings today, so maybe oh, I'm going to. Oh, yeah. what? What? No way. Nice to see How many are there? There's two. Oh There's my god. Two. What? 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 Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> We're manifesting. <laughs> We're manifesting our dreams. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Chat. We're out here for. Well, this is our second week. Um, <laughs> it it sea, feels like it's but a lot this longer. expedition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. This expedition is about 29 days, correct? <sighs> Oof. Woohoo! <laughs> so the following week we'll see land. I'm feeling it. Uh, following week. Mm -hmm. What? Two, following week. Two weeks. Wait. Yeah. The following week, not next week, following yeah, okay. week. Okay. Uh. Although, maybe we'll head to Palmyra this week. No. Oh. 
Wait, well. I heard they have an emergency. They ran out of ice cream. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> we need to help them. Ice cream is keeping me going. <laughs> What? Sorry. Astro schema is no longer valid. <laughs> so good look at Samantha's yeah, uh, is earrings. Meow. Yeah. What? Say hi. Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> Which camera am I on? It's looking at you. Looking at your uh, I want to see the earrings. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, which one? You were looking right at it just a second it's ago. So oh, it's yeah. the camera. Hi. Yeah, there. Uh, oh, is there a zoom here? <laughs> Go yeah, to zoom to my ear. Like really, <laughs> God, you need to clean those ears. <laughs> Whale sharks. Clean. Okay. Uh, science, continue to move. Move. <laughs> Get me out of here. Continue. Bridge, Neb. Uh, three zero meters zero nine zero. There's I feel like this camera will switch on when I have the worst possible posture. Huh? Like this this camera right here. Like when I'm not paying attention. Oh, You're I on. see. Oh, great. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I do feel like I need to really correct my posture on this. Yeah, we're watch. always I'm bending down in. to look at the screens. This doesn't feel natural. <laughs> it feels very unnatural. This is how I will lead it. That's, That's how, how Leela feels. This is how. Oh, yeah, yeah poor Leela. Oh, there's a Metal oh. Gorgia. Yep. Unfortunately, the most whale sharks are in Australia, the Caribbean, yeah. and Mexico. So, straight out of luck. Oh. I live in the Caribbean, and whale sharks don't visit me. No. Oh. It's sad. So, you mentioned Australia? Ooh. Or fish. That's an yeah. interesting looking fish. Is it a Can we zoom on the fish, please? <coughs> Lower right. It's very dark. Yeah. Zoom in, Dave. What is that? Oh, uh, oh Cuskeel. Oh. I think. Is it cusk or tripod? Not tripod. Okay. Not cusk. I don't rat think. tail. Rat tail? I don't. Know. I call them all rat tails. I don't. <laughs> oh. Wait. No. It's, I don't think it's a rat tail. Looks more like it's in the cusk hill family. Yeah. But just bigger pectoral fins. Hmm. The feelers on the ventral side are interesting too. Yeah. Kind of long whiskers. Could just be a cuskill that has bigger fins. Is that possible? <laughs> You're asking the wrong guy. I mean, it's a whole family, right? Of, of Fididae. Yeah. Looks pretty cusky, though. <laughs> Very fishy to me. All right. Release the fish. See Ben. And up to him, I think. Yeah. Take it back. No, don't take it back. That's all right. No, I think it's up. I do want to update the team since it's uh, a little past 10 that we have gone 570 meters. Yes! Oh, yes! Let's go! In two hours, which is impressive for us. <laughs> we did <doing> so <laughs> well, good. We could stop right here for the rest of the walk. Oh, I'm sorry. We went 500 and after this move, 520 meters. Oh. Which is about uh, found um, marine organisms, um, which wow. could definitely harm marine life. Um, not to mention like the the chemical effects of the degrading. Um,
trash. Yeah, those microplastics really get into the environment. Yeah, and that can those can end up on coral polyps and prevent feeding and photosynthesis and eventually killing the coral. Well, yeah, it can you know. it can kind of suffocate them. Right. Yeah, so pulled up I pulled up the paper and and actually the the cleanest area we saw was John, was the area around Johnston Atoll. Oh, cool. Um, and the Rain National Monument there, um, and the 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 densest uh, the two areas with the most highest concentration of marine debris in the deep sea was uh, the main Hawaiian Islands, and then the area around American Samoa, mm. with almost a, a thousand um, pieces of debris per square kilometer. Wow, I think the That's most so surprising sad. thing to me is just how widespread it is like even in in national monuments where there's very little pollution very few people there's still pollution um they have even found trash in the mariana's trench so you know ocean currents will carry that trash throughout the ocean there's a point that all the currents converge and it's called the pacific garbage patch is that yeah. still a thing yeah, so that's mainly in the surface, and that talks a lot about floating types of trash. Um, but yeah, the, the, the center of most of the subtropical gyres concentrates um, floating debris, um, and especially microplastics. All right, Adam is back, so I will return you Thank back to your you. regularly scheduled watch. Have a good rest of your watch, y'all. Thanks, 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 Brian. Brian. Thank you for joining. <laughs> Got a good rock. So, Yils, can you tell us a bit about what we're seeing here in terms of biodiversity? Yeah, we're seeing a lot of crinoids. Um, we're continuing to see a lot of paramaricidae. Um, we've seen both hemichorallium and analapsomia, which can be easily confused. And an urchin. An urchin. <laughs> Some norella. Um, it's a very biodiverse area for sure. Amazing. Thank you. Zoom on this, please. Sponge. Yeah. Zoom in, Dave. The shrimp. Oh. Okay. It's really interesting shape. Interestingly formed shrimp. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, interesting shrimp. <laughs> well formed. <laughs> Great shrimp. All the way down. Could this be for red? What's inside the sponge there? Those little white knobs? Oh, those be barnacles? Mm. Could be kind of looking straight on it. Sure, or some something on one of his really antennas. Sure. Well, I think that's little hairs that are catching the light. Is it because as that antenna moves, you see? Oh, this is great in the still cam. Um, yeah, I think oh. this is Faraday. Goodbye. Cool. <laughs> that would Faraday turbocharger. <laughs> no. What? What? Way. And that is the real name. Oh, really? Turbocharger. Yes, turbocharger. What? what? I didn't know we get to I'm name sponges I'm not lying about like that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Adam's becoming a biologist now. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, don't, I 
rear change. Actually, the turbocharger looked like it had uh, some kind of pipes on the back side of it. Pipes? Like there, if you go back to the image. Yeah, it kind of kinda did. Yeah, I'm, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, I'd love it for it to be turbocharger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, chat says Trezzo Plura. So Plura? Is that Latin Plura. for turbocharger? <laughs> 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 I wish it was turbocharger. How do you spell it? Treto Plura. Okay, science, we're finishing the move. Look around, stop and do something, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Bridge oh, now. It's a beautiful look. Three zero meters, zero nine zero. Have you guys oh. started to go Whoa. downhill? Whoa. Oh, man. Look what at is that. that? Let's go. Oh, wow. Big garden up there. Garden. Oh, so beautiful. Wow. So what's amazing to me is this knob, there's like a bazillion like it in this area. You know, maybe it is the depth of this, but if, you know, if this one looks like this, there's got to be hundreds more that, that look like this or maybe even more dense. Yeah, I mean, it's like we're looking under a magnifying glass. It's true. Kirk and is so like little we're compared under the to the ocean yeah. floor. And the ant is controlling it. And no. it's getting so hot. Not, qu not quite, Ow. but... Her burns! <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's all thanks to rocks. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> we didn't have the rocks. Thanks, Can rocks. do it without them. nature's underappreciated floorboards. <laughs> <laughs> have, are we uh, still looking to do eDNA? We've gotten uh, how many? Three so far? Yep, but, three. But yeah, I mean, yeah, well, I think we're still, this is a great place to get another one if you can you doing it? float up here and I would grab agree. It. Yeah. Sort of seems middle of the road here. Middle of the road, exciting, or Bridge we're now. in the middle <laughs> of the road? Middle of the patch. Okay, yeah. Middle of the patch. Well, Hold position. Okay. That's the Niskin come under. We have Niskin bottles one through three available. Right. Let's do three if we can. They started at the back, six, five, four, three. All right. Jules, can you tell me a little bit about the biodiversity we're seeing here for the sample? Yeah, sure. Uh, we're seeing some bamboo, some primnoids, um, some hemichorallium, uh, bathypathies, crinoids, uh, paramaricidae. Uh, let's see, what else can I see? <laughs> There's so much. I know. Uh, basket stars, crinoids, um, hmm. brittle stars. Can you turn up the volume there, Dave? Shrimp. Pop. That's it. Awesome. Zero. Oh, it's 100. One hundred forty-nine more to go. <laughs> Niskin three, yep. Yeah, yep. Niskin three. So we've reached the century mark on samples. It's a hundred different samples of biology, geology, water. It's pretty great. 
So when we're taking eDNA, what are we looking for when we process? What does that tell us? We are looking for DNA that ends up in the water column. Mm -hmm. So all of these organisms are, you can think of it as, as shedding <laughs> um, DNA. And we want to know how much we can um, gather just from looking at the DNA in the water sample, opposed to directly sampling from each of these individual organisms. Right. And it can even tell us about the microbiology or the oh. microbial biology of the area. But one of the biggest challenges of the method, there's a few, like one is usually the deeper you are in the ocean, the less DNA there is floating about. So you have mm. to filter a lot of water in order to get enough uh, concentrate enough DNA to measure and then once you measure it you need a really good library because you're basically trying to collect or you're, you're kind of identifying ACTG patterns but you need something known to compare it to uh, and so we're always trying to build that library so that's why one of the reasons why the samples we collect here are really important so we can kind of gather up their genetic fingerprint to compare to some of these other methods like eDNA. Cool, thank you. And where are these samples going? The eDNA samples? Correct. Yeah, they're generally the ones we collect here go to Meredith Townsend, a, a NOAA researcher who has been uh, kind of doing the analyses on these for, for a number of years, but I assume, you know, one of the nice things about collecting the eDNA, you don't need everything necessarily that we filter, so you can preserve and, and archive parts of the eDNA samples for later analysis, because the analysis methods we use today are vastly improved from the methods from say 10 years ago and the methods in 10 years are going to be vastly improved from the ones we use now. And it's one of the reasons, so there's definitely a move towards uh, measuring the eDNA in situ. So we so we do a method where we collect the water, bring it back to the ship and, and filter it uh, with within the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute and on Nautilus uh, before we've used, uh, we developed a, an uh, uh, in situ pumping and filtration. And when I say in situ, that just means in place. So on the bottom of the ocean, pump and filter the water. So then you end up not having to filter up on the ship. You just collect the filters at the end of the dive. And the next phase of that is is likely going to be in situ pumping, filtration, and measurement. But um, people have argued that it's really important to have those physical samples for the reason that you know that analysis methods change over over time. Uh, so in situ pumping, filtration, measurement, where we can also save those physical samples would be, I think, the ideal kind of end game for this. Wait till it gets on the other side. You want to wait until vehicles are on the other side of the ship. But when Atlanta's on the other side, that hurts. Oh, hang out. Here. So you do want to switch the vehicles then? I do. Okay. Now it's a wall. Yeah. We weren't on a wall. Roger. Now we're on a wall. Okay. And it looks semi steep there. I don't know. It's, yeah, it'll pick up in steepness. So I'll just wait here. That sounds great. Science, anything we want to zoom on? Well, if we're waiting here, everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> yeah, let's do some zooms. Check out associates.